just wanted a high level refresher, I guess. Um, because like I was so looking let, at apply let's do that. and yeah, Funtor, yeah. and yeah. it just confused me because like they seem like the same thing, but I don't know. Apply and fun. Okay, apply and Funtor. Uh, let's look at them. Let's look at them very quickly. Um, hang on, let me share my screen. Uh, it's now this one, I assume. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yes, so you can now see that. Okay, good. Right. Let me move this thing. Yeah. Um, yeah, you can see this stuff, right? Yeah. Okay, cool. So, yeah, let's have a look quickly at fun. So this is that previous project before we switch to that Concur thing. So I'm just going to delete up all this crap. Uh, log, I don't know what this is. Log hello, right? That should compile. Okay, good. Um, let's look. So you were saying functor and apply. Yeah, okay. Okay. I think let's go have a look at these two guys. So functor is this, right? So functor is a, is a type class. That's fine. But it's like its important method is this one, right? The map method. This is also the same as that, right? Agree? Yes. Then let's go look at apply. Apply actually might be exactly the same. Let's go see. So check. Apply. So first of all, apply is like derives from functor. I know this looks like backwards, but you kind of read it backwards. So the class apply <laughs> inherits from functor. That's the way to read that thing. Um, I suppose because that little symbol um, greater than equal to like if they flipped it the other way around it would kind of mean like constraint you know like uh, or, or whatever like it would be the you know eq that symbol is like the constraint symbol um, so anyway like does that make sense you read this backwards apply inherits from functor so i'm defining the class apply it's the last thing there but it inherits from functor I know in any other language, it would probably say class apply extends functor. So it would be the other way around. Um, OK, so apply provides that, which is in addition to functor. So it's this one. Does that make sense? Which is used to apply a function to an argument under a type constructor. Apply can use to lift from wrapped. So I would, is recovered from lift. So this probably for a lot of things oh uh, yeah so I look there the f so there is a subtle difference here so apply looks like that so map says oh, sorry i just added that for for fun can you see any difference between these two things this thing right yeah there's so, a random if as part of the arguments yeah so there's some so it's a function under a under a type or whatever that can then apply itself to f of a to give you f of b but keeping in mind that it is still i mean it is like it's a um, it's like a, a superset or like a specialization of functor, I suppose. So apply is, is just giving you, I mean, it is functor. So anything that has apply is also functor, meaning that you can use that on it, but you can also use this if it does have apply for whatever reason. Um, I, I would say there's probably like some very subtle difference here. Um, and maybe we need to understand this stuff it represents a strong lack semi monoidal endofunctor. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but like, there's definitely the, I mean, there's the difference from a signature perspective. So what would that actually mean? So if we had, so let's go and see, I mean, I always like to play with like list and maybe. Let's go look at list and see, does it have apply? Uh, that's a lazy list. I prefer the non-lazy one. It, I mean, it must have apply, I assume. Yeah, there. So let's go and see its source for apply. P 
playlist where <clears throat> So that's the the argument on the left. Oh, so look here. OK, so this this makes sense to me now. So like apply actually takes a list of functions and a list and it will apply the list of functions to the list. Whereas map would just apply a function to the list. Does that make sense? So when I'm so if it's a list, uh, okay, so say I've got, uh, let's just create a function f equals f x x plus one, right? So it's gonna, it's like f is a takes an int and returns an int, right? Happy with that, yes? So I'll even call this ink or something. Ink makes more sense. Increment. Let's just comment this stuff out. All right. Um, so if I want to, if if I took a Let's actually use array. Uh, uh, it will, I'm sure it will be identical, but array just is. I've, I've started doing examples rather than array because array is like easier to easier to type out. So, so I've got a an array of five things, right? And I want to apply. So let's use map first of all. I want to run this ink over all of them. I would apply it. I would map it, map it, right? Map to ink. Does that make sense? Is that the right way around? No, it's not. So it would be, sorry, it would be ink mapped to that thing, right? So this would be like result or something. Result equals ink, and result is an array of int. Agree? So you, we, we, you're happy with that? Yes, that, that makes sense. So that's map, right? I mean, that's the regular ass map. Of course, we know that there's a flip map, a flipped map, which is that way around, right? Which might, so we, let's just be explicit, result two, so let's call that result one. This one can be result two. There's also an array of int. And result two equals, it's just, I'm just going to cut and paste it. We could do that too. Yes. The array to ink. Yeah. Okay. Sure. So you can flip the argument, the arguments around, right? And um, that would be uh, Daniel. You know F sharp, I think, right? So it's it's like that operator in F sharp. Whereas this one would be that operator in F sharp. Yeah. Okay. It's the pipeline. Like this yeah. is pipeline. Like a hundred percent pipeline. You can just flip them with the hash. Dollar goes. Regular way around, hash goes opposite way around. Um, okay, so now let's see what is apply. So apply is like, um, if we look at array, oh yeah, this is that prim st stuff. Do we see, I just want to get to the source of array. Uh, array, were we in the right one? Yeah, it's built in. So how do I get to its source? This is what I'm not sure of. Oh, so maybe list was better, but um, OK. Um, do we care? Um, let me just go to list. I'm pretty sure array is going to be exactly the same way around, but I just like to look at the. At the source because it tells us a lot if we look at its implementation of apply. There it is there. So I'm just going to lift that out and let's just rewrite it for arrays, assuming it's the same, which I'm pretty sure it will be. It will be an, okay, so how do we destructure an array actually? Oh, maybe array can't. Yeah, let's, let's use lists, list, list. The list equals equals this thing, but rewritten as a list. Does that make sense? <laughs> Import data dot list, and we need no. Hmm. Is it data dot list? It's list of null inside the. Parentheses, 
at the oh, top. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Quite right. List of no, but it's saying actually module not found. Uh, do I need to like import lists, pure script lists? So you go install uh, lists. Ah, okay. So we go build. Okay, yeah, I know an operator. Now it doesn't like that operator, which we also need imported like that, right? Okay, so I mean, Daniel, this is just list construction. This is how you can. It's a it's a linked list, so you can you this appends an element to a list that guy there. So actually, it really looks like this. So what does that null do? Null is the empty list. So when I create a list L, and I just want something on it like five, I can't just do that. It like it has to be appended onto an empty list because it's a linked list, right? So the link, last element in a linked list points to the empty list. Do you know what I mean? Um, and so with with lists in in this language, you certainly you're pretty explicit about that. You quite you actually show you show in memory how it looks. So this is one appended onto this. And that is two appended onto three, or appended onto four, appended onto five, which appended onto the empty list. So in memory, does that kind of make sense? So do you always have an like a null a null list or an empty list that you're pointing to to start yeah. with? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So if you an empty list is just that, right? Mm -hmm. That's the empty list. So then you say, well, what is a list with one element on it? It is the element appended onto the empty list. Okay. Do you know what I mean? What is a list of two elements? Well, it's two appended onto one, appended on. So I could say appended onto L1. You know what I mean? So that's two wow. appended onto L1, which is one appended onto null. <laughs> you know what I mean? So that's how so you build up lists. In, okay. So um, null is always the starting point. For lists. Yeah, yeah, he's yeah, 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 exactly. Because there's no like, I mean, it's really equivalent to saying like it's empty. You know what I mean? An empty. Yeah. So it would be like, like that. You know, in, in okay. your mind, you can do that. Null is just the empty list. Null. It's cool. not the same as null. It's a very special thing called null, um, which is just the empty list. But anyway, I mean, like, just get used to that notation. It's not like actually a big deal. Um, it's just cool. showing its implementation underneath. Um, okay, so we're just going to do this with that, the list now, just to flip that thing around. So now we can go and look at our cool apply. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to ignore that like null one. That's probably just weird. Okay, so that's what apply looks like. Um, yeah. So. I mean, ignoring that, I just I'm just look, looking at this. Like the difference for apply, you can kind of see it already. Is that so? If we looked at the uh, let's find map for list quickly equals list map. Okay, and what is list map? List map is that. Yeah. Um, Let's get rid of this stuff so we can read it. There we go. So like, yeah. I mean, it's it, it's kind of it's kind of good enough. Yeah, list map of f. Yeah, okay. Okay, it's not quite exactly the same um, thingy, but what what we can see here is like that operator. So map there. Um, I'm just going to rewrite it like map for for in this situation is taking a on the left side. It's a function which goes to, from an int to an int. Correct. That's what ink is. Ink is an int to an int. So map on there's map. The left side is the first argument. The second argument is the list is the thing on the right side. And we can see the list is a list of int, right? List of int. And what is it going to give us back? It's going to give us back result one, which is itself a list of int, right? So that's how map has worked for us um, in 
in or certainly in that example. I'm going to just kill this one, right? Um, so how does apply look? Um, apply is we can kind of see it here already. We can see, oh look, so it's not just an F. So if we had to implement map, it would be map with F is that dude. And the second one we can call X X's just to copy what apply is doing. And that's giving us back something, right? So it's map with F and X's. Here we can already see that apply is like, oh, like what's it doing? It's going apply is a list of functions and X's. Does that make sense? So if, if we're going to use apply, um, let's call it result two, we definitely know we want a list of int back, result two, and we want to call increment on our list. We would have to go like it's increment as a list applied to the list. So it's like the 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 the, the function that gets executed. Oh, sorry, onto null. The function that we pass to apply on the left needs to be under the under the type of the of the second argument. Does that make sense? Like that, you can just see that you can see it from its signature. I'm not sure what that means and why that why that is the case or why that's useful. But certainly, just looking at the types, I can totally see that. We can see, oh look, apply in in the list case. We took a function as the a single function and a list. In the apply case, we took a list of functions and a list. And it's like, well, why would you do that? And it's like maybe because you might want to like pass in multiple functions. So like deck of x. And, and let's just try it. So we've got an ink and a deck. Let's make a deck. Deck of x equals x minus one, right? So like, what happens when we do this? So let's figure it out. Um, log of, I'm pretty sure we can show these things. Show result one, first of all. So we go run. Okay. So that was with result one, right? We just printed that out and you can see it's two, three, four, five, six, right? Yes, so cool. So it applied ink to every element of the list. Now let's have a look at, let's do that first. Let's run it against result two. We expect the same kind of thing, yeah? So like th that's totally equivalent. Just the single function inside there will give us so the question is, well, what if I give it the empty list? There's an interesting question. What do we expect to see? Like an empty list, right? So even though we gave it a list of elements, we passed it no functions to apply to it. So it just came back with an empty list. If what if we go ink and deck in here? Now this is an interesting one. It's like, ah, oh, check what it did. So it applied the ink to the first set, then it applied deck to the second set. Does that make sense? So it's like, and we could even do it again, ink and deck. And it's like, oh, look, so apply is a little bit more powerful. It's almost like a, it's like a cross, cross product, product type of idea. Yeah, exactly. So that's okay. the difference. So that's how, I mean, so they're very similar, yes, because you can implement map in terms of apply for sure. But we can see that already in its signature. We can already see that apply is a superset of functor like provides you know it, it already inherits from functor so it's like it's it's adding more functionality to it do you know what i mean yeah so that's okay. so, and that so that's within the context of lists the question is well what about in the context of like the maybe right where i say i've got a just a five or something we just need to import that import data dot maybe uh, we need maybe and just and we probably know we're going to need nothing later. Does that make sense? So now we've got a just of five and we want to apply ink. Can we do this? No, so it won't be a list anymore. Now is a maybe of int and this is going to be a maybe of int. So now we're wanting to apply increment to our maybe, right? So you're happy with that? We're going to get back a maybe, which we know. So it's like if we changed our our signature, now that we're using maybes, this changes to a maybe. 
and that changes to a maybe. Agree? So it's like, yeah, it's the same old function, int to an int, which is inc or dec, but now we're passing it a maybe int, which means it must return a maybe int, correct? Um, so that's cool. Um, however, down here, it's like, oh, okay, so now the funny thing is like apply needs to have a function under the type of its of its result. Like, so let's actually just write it. Like it's it's very much map, but it's got one extra thing here called maybe. Like that's the difference, right? Remember we saw that it had that little f in front of the function there. Whereas before we had a list of functions, now we've got a maybe of functions. You agree? Yeah. Sort of. Sort of. So that means that like we can't pass ink as a list anymore. We have to pass it as a maybe. So how do we do that? So we go maybe ink, right? Sorry, just ink to make it an ink. And we pass it the maybe. Yeah, because we can wrap our ink function into a maybe. We can wrap anything into a maybe, right? So we pass just ink applied to the maybe. <laughs> so it does just return a maybe. Yes, just as a constructor of maybe. There's two constructors, maybe and nothing. So like, do we, are we happy with this? So let's see what this gives us. Let's see why this is useful. So result one is six, cool. Uh, actually, it's just six, very importantly. It's not just six. So that was that one because we passed it a just five. So if we pass it a nothing, what do we expect it to be? A nothing, yeah, or just a 20. Tom, when, when, you, when you have a, when you need to return a maybe and it returns a value, that's when you use just. When there's no value, you return nothing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, you can think of maybe as like a nullable type of thing. So we're saying here, so in its signature, the maybe is a maybe int, right? Um, and we're saying, oh, just 20. So it's then it's definitely an int. It's 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 definitely the just side of the equation or it could be nothing nothing which is like equivalent to null i suppose if we were trying to um do a nullable type of vibe so cool. just of uh, so you can't say just just what like just 100 or something and then it's like oh okay it's definitely it's the value int yeah and so what you can see is like functor allows you to run a function so like that ink function, remember it needs an int, not a maybe int. So I couldn't, I couldn't just go like r equals um, increment the maybe, right? I can't call that function. So like call the function ink with the maybe, which is a just 100, and the error will say like it couldn't match the type maybe int with type int, because int ink needs int, so it can't take a maybe int, right? So you, you would have to like, I mean, in, in a sort of naive way, so it was like, well, okay, so I wanna run ink on the the thing inside there. Well, how would I do that? I would, I mean, in a naive way, I'd have to like match it. I'd have to break it out of its maybe packaging and go case the maybe of, and like un, unmatch it. And it's like, okay, well, if it's a just with an X or a nothing, then what do I do? So it's like, well, if, a, if it's if it's an x, if I, if it is a just, then give me the value as x, then increment x. If it's nothing, like what do I do? Uh, I don't know. Maybe it's like a minus one hundred, because r r itself, oops, r itself needs to have some type. So it's like well, it's an int, correct? So it's like I can't leave it out. I can't go like it's you know like nothing, <laughs> like nothing. It's like well, what is r? R has to have some value. And it has to have an integer value, an int value, right? So it's like, well, what is it? Like maybe it's naught or something. Maybe that's my decision, right? Mm -hmm. And so, so often like that's a bad idea because you like you're losing info. So like you probably wouldn't make R an int. You would probably make him a maybe int as well. And now it's like, so then I can go, oh well, if 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 the maybe is nothing, then also R is nothing. So that makes sense. And now I've got to say, well, when I ink X, and I could not match int with maybe int. So it's like, well, what's the answer here? Can you just on X? 
So I'd have to just the result of it, right? So I could go just of ink x, correct? Because r has to be a maybe. So just is the way of giving it an actual value. Nothing is not. You happy with that? Yeah. So like that totally makes sense. You could write code like this. Another way to write it is just like use the use functor, <laughs> which is just like, okay, well, functor already, like if we look at what functor does, let's go do it. Uh, and it should hopefully have a maybe implemented in it. Uh, it will actually be inside maybe, unfortunately. Maybe there's functor of maybe. Let's go look at the source. Here it is. So functor maybe. So where it's map of a function and a just of x, the answer is just with that function applied to x. It's like, oh, perfect. It's like exactly what we did here. Like, let's just put it there. It's like, what did we do? We went like that. Yeah. Just a function of x. And that's when it is a just of x. Perfect. Just of x, just of increment x. Where it's map of anything and anything else. So anything that's not that type, which would only really be nothing, I suppose, the answer is nothing. So that's what that guy does. It effectively just wraps up that pattern. It's exactly this pattern wrapped in that little cool thing called map, which I could also call like map if I wanted to map ink to the maybe. That's also fine. Yeah. Okay. So this little, that little operator is the same as putting map. I mean, I could also, I think I can backtick and type map there like that if I like. Yeah. Okay, so that's functor. Bavesh, are you happy, happy with, a, with apply? Have you got apply? Yes, yes. The difference? I, would as, I would have assumed that when we ran the, um, the list of, when we ran the apply for like a bunch of inks and decks passed into it. Yeah. Uh, I was assuming you'd get back the same length list, but with all the functions applied to it. So it would be oh, like, like if you called ink lists. and deck, it would result back in the original list. Oh, but it's more cross product. Yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I see what you're saying. Yeah. Well, I mean, you could make your own version of it if you like. I mean, you can create your own um, apply implementation. If you want, if that's what you want, you can do that. Yeah, no, I, I was just trying to understand the difference, um, but I think this yeah. was a good explanation. So thank you. Yeah. So, so the, I mean, the, like fundamentally, the difference is in that. I mean, I, you've got to just get used to like just read the signature. So like map takes as parameter one a function which goes from an A to a B. Its second parameter is a something. Let's call it an F. It could be an M. It doesn't matter what it is. It's an F of A, the second parameter, and, and its result is an F of B, right? That's the ink function, int to an int. So A and Bs are ints here. A maybe of int will give me a maybe of int. Does that make sense? Um, and I know like it could be A and A, but it's not, I mean, map is not constrained by, by A and A. It could be the function ink actually returns a string or something. Um, and apply, like, very, very similar is an F with a, so it's a function which goes from A to a B under an F, given an F of A will give us an F of B. So they're like almost identical other than that. And you say, well, what is F? And it's like, well, F is the thing that you're passing on the, on, on, on the right side of it, which is a list or a maybe or an array or a map or a whatever the hell that thing is. So it means that the function on the left side must also be under that same thing. So if it's a list over here, that must be a list of functions. If this is a maybe of something, then that must be a maybe of that function. Um, does that make sense? Which, which yeah. is pretty powerful, which is pretty powerful, but it like, doesn't make a lot of sense all the time. You know, so it's like, well, which one is better for you? You know, they're, they're just, they're, they're just a bit different. The, the cool thing is that the types tell you a lot. So it's, you know, like, the, the type for me, I read the types and I go, oh, okay, I kind of got it. I mean, I know what map is trying to do, um, but already I can see 
that it's like, okay, this function on the left is not under some kind of, um, under some other type. It's like, oh, it's just a bare function, end to end, list of end, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, any other questions in, uh, what about that word monad? <laughs> so we talked about functors and apply now. What about monad? While we're looking at this, should we not just look at monad as well? Uh, if everyone else is keen, sure. Um, I have my answer, so. <laughs> but have you got your answer for monad? Not as yet. Can you describe it? Let's go look not at, at it. all. I was going to actually try and figure it out um, by myself after this morning's session. Okay. Applicative and bind, yeah, okay. So for me, monad is really just bind. I only think about bind, although applicative is very important. It, yeah, I suppose it is the combination of these two things. So bind is being the bind operator, introduces that bind operator. And applicative also, yeah, okay. Applicative brings pure. Um, sh should we try and understand this a little bit? Because um, I think we could use even our same kind of example here, um, talking about maybes and stuff like that. Um, and let's just extend it. Like, I think it's actually quite simple. So let's start first of all with, let's start with bind. Applicative is, applicative is like actually so bloody simple. In Haskell, applicative actually is part of monad. The, the pure, I think pure is called return in Haskell, is actually implemented in Monad. I, I think in PureScript they separate these two. Um, but anyway, bind. So like, let's just understand bind very quickly. Look, here he is. We'll follow the same kind of dumb approach to understanding stuff, which is let's just look at its signature. So I'm going to take away the, the A's and B's to make it simple. So it's like, okay, if I call bind, I've got a something of an A. So this was in functor world, we call that F. As soon as we move into monad world, it becomes the letter M, but like M and F are the same thing. They're just variables, right? They're just names of stuff. So it's a an F or an M of A or an X of A, it doesn't matter. So something on the on the left. So A here could be int. Let's let's assume that we're working in our ink and deck world. Int to int, so that means A and B's are ints. So let's just actually start to rewrite bind. So we're gonna go something. So A is an int, B is an int. Cool. And now it's like, okay, well, what could this be? This could be a maybe, right? Or should we start with list? Maybe list makes more sense. Uh, let's go with the list. Yeah. So list event, list event, list event. So what does this actually do now? So like given a list event and a function which goes from one, from an int to a list of ints, give me back a list of int. It's like, oh, that's quite interesting. What does that actually do? Any, any guesses? as to what bind would do for lists before we actually just do it. List of int, so result three, we want to give it a list of ints, so let's call it x's, um, oh sorry, result three equals, uh, we want to go, so given a list of ints on the side, we called it the list, we want to then bind to a function which given an int, must return us a list of ints. Okay, so we don't actually have that function because our ink goes into int, doesn't go to list of int. So let's make a new function. We'll call it like uh, question mark equal is a type, as a function which goes from a list to a, an int to a list of ints. Let's go question mark of x equals, so given an int, we want to return back a list of x plus one appended to a list, right? So let's do that. There's a cool function called question mark, which abides by our signature, right? X plus one, why is that an issue? Oh, maybe I must bracket this. Yeah, so we could have actually go in ink, ink X maybe. Is that better? Yeah. You guys happy with that? So all we're doing is we're calling ink, but we are abiding by, like bind needs us to return it as a list of ints, given an int, Give me back a list of ints. So I was like, okay, so we've done that. We made a, I, I don't know what this function is. So I've called it question mark and let's call bind over there. So now we've used bind, which is part of bind. So what does it do? It does kind of what we expect it to do, right? 
yeah which is like it, it it incremented the thing what if we got deck of x also in there ah look at that two so look it's run them like in a slight in a subtly different order so it obviously went ink first, then deck, then ink, then deck, then ink, then deck. Does that makes sense. So, so starting with element zero, element one, sorry, because uh, our list starts with a one. So it ran increment first on it, then decrement on it. Then it ran increment, then decrement, then increment, then decrement. So one, two, three, four, five. Does that make sense? So did a, a bar ran all the inks and then all the decks, right? Uh, yes, yes, it did. Hey, yeah, yeah. That's just probably up to its implementation. So okay. like th that's what so so that's what bind does for a a list. I mean, I mean for a yeah for of type list. I mean, I would call this probably like flat map. You know what I mean? That's what that's what bind is doing in the context of list. It's doing like a flat map, correct? So it runs that, then it runs that. All those th these things are returning themselves inside a list. It's kind of unpacked. Like I would expect the answer, if if these were, if these were arrays, like given a one, two, three, four, five, uh, the first time we run it, we run, you know, it runs question mark on, um, question mark as its first parameter. It gives it like a one, right? And we're saying, I'm just like sort of reducing it. And we're saying, oh, the answer is like this. It's like incremented first, two, and decremented next is zero, right? So the answer is this list of two and, and zero. So it's like, okay, so in, and then question mark of two equals, okay, so it's plus, plus one is three, and then minus one is one, right? Three and one, there's our next answer, three and one as a list yeah so i'd expect the answer to be like it's a list but inside it is a list of lists do you know what i mean three comma one comma four comma two does that make sense like the way the implementation would 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 run it should be like it's a list but each time we invoke the function it returns us a list so we put that in the in those lists right but you can see that it's not doing that so what it's doing is it's flattening it as well so that's why i'd call it a flat map so bind is is mapping and then flattening within the context of list yeah sort of so let's see what bind does to with maybe so there's our i don't know way to do this result of four maybe int Result four equals, okay, so we had the maybe or something. Yeah, there's the maybe bound onto. So now we've got to like write, rewrite bind. Now with the word maybe, maybe there. I'm telling you the, the answer is to just look at the types. Just like, just do this dumbly. Don't even try and predict what happens. Just rewrite the types. Okay, so our first parameter is the maybe. The next parameter needs to be an int that gives us a maybe int, an int to a maybe int. It's like, oh, that's quite interesting. Okay, so what is that function? So this is also a question mark function, QM or QM1 or something, and it must be an int to a maybe int. So QM1 equal of X equals, like what do we do now? So we go maybe just X, just ink X, something like that. Then we've done the bind, comment that out. Happy with that? I mean, I just solved the solved the types by going QM into a maybe int. So how do I do that? I want to increment that X, yes. And I want to give it a just. So it's like, I definitely got an X, guaranteed an X. Um, it's definitely an int. Uh, it's not a maybe int, but the way I've got to return is as a under a maybe. So what does the result four give us? What was the maybe again? It's just 100. What do we think the answer will be? Just 101. So it's like perfect. So like, so what does bind do in the context of maybe?
basically the same as map, right? <laughs> is what I would think. It, like I would say it works basically the same. So probably if we're going to look at maybe, and we looked at its bind, let's actually go look at its source. Bind. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's definitely doing the same thing as map does. So we know that, so this was just 100 onto QM1. <clears throat> If it was nothing, we get nothing. So like bind, very simple. No? Yeah. Happy with bind? It's like so basic. It's, it's like there's nothing much to bind, right? So, so why is it so? So I mean, this doesn't show like why it's awesome. It just goes like, okay, it's very stupid. It seems very simple. Um, but where it is cool is like I want to go just of 100, and I want to bind that. So we know that you know I don't have to create a whole function. I can just bind um, the x or something, and I go just uh, I don't know x plus one or something. So I can write it like in in line like that. R is a maybe int, so that makes sense. So just 100, bind like that. Then I could bind that again, so whatever that result is, a Y or something, and I could go just Y times by 100, and then bind that again, Z. Just uh, whatever, Z plus five right um so bind allows this cool chaining idea and, and we'll get to why where applicative comes from now so like okay cool so given any anything up here and this could also be nothing which is pretty cool and so what do we expect it just to return nothing so like these things never get invoked if 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 um if the input is nothing if the input is nothing even though i've bounded onto other stuff those things never run. So it's like, it will only lazily invoke it if if this thing is actually adjust, right? So, so like from a code perspective, I really don't care what my input is. Um, I know how to manage, you know, manage the computation of the thing. So if this thing is null, I don't, I don't have to do a check for null. I just bind, 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 bind. Actually, the bind itself will do the null check for me, right? You agree with that? Does that make sense? So if this is just 100, like we know that x here is an int. In fact, I can actually say it's an int like that, I think, somehow. Oh, I can't. I thought I could I have to bracket it. x is an int. Oh, there we go. So we know that these parameters, x, y, and z, are ints. Like we can see it, right? It's not a maybe int. So I, I don't have to do the null check. So if, I mean, if it was like a null type of idea, I don't have to check that x is null before I just use it, correct? It's just we know that this function will just not be invoked if if x is null. Do you know what I mean? We can actually see it right there. So bind of nothing is just immediately nothing. There is no invoking of the function. So the function is called k in this scenario. So there's the thing on the left. k is the thing on the right. So if it's a just of something, then call k on x. So that means call this function on x. But if it's nothing, do nothing. So it's like just resolve immediately into to nothing. So don't invoke it. So this drops my my need to check for null, which is really cool. Um, however, this does look a little bit stinky because here I have to write the word just. So it means these functions here are, already know that they are of type maybe. They're like maybe functions, right? Because they already know that this thing could be just. You agree? So for example, I couldn't go and say, actually, this is a list of 100 onto these functions because it's going oh but just is not maybe and list are not the same thing right so we know oh shit the answer here has to also be a list correct so if we're binding like which is exactly what we had up here the question mark function when we gave it a list bound onto question mark question mark had to return a list of ints, right? So that means this function here also must return a list of ints. So I could just go and say, oh, okay, yes. So the answer is x plus one 
onto null. And that will solve that one. And then I can rewrite that and rewrite that. But then we might just go, well, that's a bit crappy. Like, I, I want to just write functions that are like agnostic. I want to be able to bind agnostic functions onto whatever the inputs are. I don't care that it's a list or a maybe, because I just want to run bind on them. So that is where applicative comes in. So let's go look at applicative. Wherever he was. Where, where did we find him? Under Monad, I think, eh? Yeah, applicative. So what does applicative do? Ah, oh, look at this. <laughs> I love applicative. Applicative is great. So what does applicative do? He says, given a thing, give me anything and I'll give you a thing of that thing. It's like, okay, so give give me an int. So what that could read is give me an int and I'll give you a list of those ints. Or give me an int and I'll give you a maybe of that int, right? So these are all variable thingies. So it's like, ah, okay. So interestingly, I don't have to really specify what f is. Like it's kind of on the return type. Of course, the compiler will will infer it if I don't specify it. So it's like, oh, okay, pure is an interesting function. So this just part where I'm putting uh, this int back into a maybe int, because remember I have an int, which is like x plus, x plus one is an int. And I wanted to make it a maybe int. And that's why I called just on it. But I could replace that with the word pure also. And it will just put it will just put the put it into the right type. Oh yeah. This is now no longer. I'm just gonna get rid of that signature there. Okay, okay let's put it in so we have no warning. So now we know that R is a list of ints. So look, my function actually it just gets given an x and it just calls pure on the answer. It doesn't know whether x came from a maybe or a list or an array. It doesn't care. It's just going to call pure on the answer and pure will figure out what underlying type it was and put it back into that into that uh, into that type. So that means I can now look here. I've given it a list. A list of things into these three functions bound, but I could also equally give it a maybe. And that type needs to change. So like the bind doesn't give a shit where it came from. Does it make sense? Look, it's a monad. <laughs> That's really cool. All right, cool. So would you say that in most cases, if a type class implements um, bind, that it also most likely implements applicative? Yeah, I would say so. And it probably therefore just implements monad. monad. Yeah. So remember okay. monad needs bind and applicative implemented. So monad is a little, so all we've actually talked about is bind and applicative. So we've used those two together in order to create. So in fact, really what we're doing is we're using bind. Applicative is just a cool way of not having to know inside your function what these types are which is super cool. Just the pure, in, in Haskell, this is called the return. Um, so applicative, it's like applicative by itself is a bit of a weird one. It's often very useful under the context of bind and therefore monad. Monad is, is, is a little bit higher order than this. We haven't actually dealt with monad yet um, because it, it adds a little bit more around control stuff. So like there's a few more things inside Monad that are implemented. But now once you go and look at them, you could probably figure them out. So it's like, okay, lift M1, what does that do? And you'll probably find lift M1 uh, may have some kind of operator, maybe it doesn't. So it's like given an A to a B, an int to an int, for example, given a list of ints, I'll give you a list, a list of ints. So it's like, okay, so lift M1 is like, if you give me, something on the right side, I'll just apply that function to all those things and give you back that B. So that's pretty much the same as map, right? That, and in fact, it's, it says this. So lift M1 provides a default implementation of map for any monad. Without using that, it's provided by functor to monad superclass relation. Okay, so like, I, I don't know why they do that, but makes sense. 
uh, when um, perform a monadic action when a condition is true, where the conditional value is also in a monadic context. Okay, cool. So given the first parameter, so a maybe of Boolean, given a maybe of unit, I'll give you a maybe of unit. And it's like whenever you see this unit thing, you probably know that this is like a conditional execution. So it's like, um, so like when m, uh, let's actually play with when m and see what if it's useful. Um, we could now go like r prime equals. So let's give it. So so we know the first parameter is a something of a boolean. So maybe it's a maybe. Let's start with maybe. So we'll go maybe true. Um, there's our first. Oh yeah, we're calling actually. Sorry, we're calling when m maybe true is our first parameter. The second one is like something to a unit. Okay, interesting. Um, so what could that be? It's just a function that given that maybe, so it's like an X must return a unit, which is weird. Um, I will give you, oh, sorry, this should be just true, right? Not maybe true. What does this thing say? Could not match second parameter. Oh, this needs to be a just also. Something like that. T to a unit just of something. Oh, it's not a function, sorry, is it? Oh, it's just something with a unit. Oh, just unit. Okay. Yeah. When M just unit. Interesting. Um give us an M unit. So like this one, it's it's weird because you like, well, what is like something of a unit means something strange, but what that probably does is it's something to like execute an effect most likely. It's probably the most useful under effects. Like we want to run something or not run something. You know what I mean? Um, and that's what it says. So when this thing is true, perform this action, which is something returning a unit. So it's like a, a function that probably just causes a side effect and it will it will give that back to you. So when that thing is true, unless is the opposite. So like, where would this be useful? Um, like I want to log something potentially. So could we do this? Um, if something is true, we want to like log something to the console, possibly. So when M just true, just unit, we like log hello. This is going to be something weird because this is now an effect with a maybe. So we maybe want to lift this. Um, and this is where it's, we're going to go into funny, funny land because we'd have to. So on this side here, we've got something which is an effect. And remember, we gave it a maybe over there. Uh, so maybe and effect are not the same type, uh, whereas they need to be here because like M and M need to be the same. So we need to lift this up into a maybe. So it's something that would go from a, like a maybe of, uh, sorry, an effect of unit to a maybe of unit. And let's see what we get. A void, maybe that makes sense. Void. Just, I don't know. What does void do? F of A to F of unit. No, that's voiding the thing inside it. Um, so on cleanup makes that looks like it might. So we go from an effective unit to an M of unit, which could be a maybe. So that could work. Um, but probably we could use this gadget, which is like, we could go nothing, maybe something like that. Effect with maybe. I don't know. Um, so like, I don't know. Like, so, so Monad needs probably a little bit more um, better examples of when we would use it but it's really got this like conditional execution sort of thing inside it but like fundamentally it's like bind and applicative are probably the most useful most useful thing i think if we had to dive into effects this thing called effect we would then start to say because effect is has unit bind applicative apply and functor so it's actually quite a nice simple guy um and effects are, are useful for like running stuff, things like logging. Like I want to log this when something is a particular value and when it isn't, I don't want it to log. That would make use of like that unless, unless thing from Monad. 
but uh, I, I don't think we have too much time, nor do I have any good examples to demonstrate it. But are you guys happy with bind and applicative thus far? We didn't get to foreign functions. My bad. All good. <laughs> uh, but this was really useful. Thanks. Uh, I kind of understand it from a different perspective now. Like I was trying maybe too academic before. Yeah. Yeah. So I, this helped quite a bit. Yeah. So I, I, I mean, I like the examples of maybes and lists. Like for me, they're based because they're two different things and they're very different, right, to each other. And so to explore bind, applicative, functor with those two examples is good. But then to move potentially into effect soon as well, because I think effects and there's something called AFF as well, which are asynchronous effects. Um, make probably a bit more sense is because then bind becomes something like a defer you know like a promise promise dot then when it's an effect or an asynchronous effect probably more yeah but the, but interestingly it, it follows the same pattern as what you are doing with lists or with maybes which is pretty cool so it means like you you work in this higher this higher level solution where it's like oh, i'm just writing these functions that do the right thing but i'm building them up using things like pure and map and bind and you know apply and there's and there's other things like compose and all that kind of stuff and it's like i can solve problems up in using just these like higher order operators i suppose or higher order functions and then it doesn't really matter whether it's a list or a value that comes off the off, off a file in an asynchronous effect or whatever it doesn't really matter because my functions are still like written in this kind of pure way you know what i mean it's almost like the input changes and my functions behave subtly different as it solves the problem, but they solve that problem in a, from a code way in a very pure way. It doesn't really matter. You know what I mean? And I think that's kind of the promise of these things is you want to write very pure code that actually is pretty agnostic to what its inputs are and its outputs actually, interestingly. And depending on what the input is, it will affect what the output is. You know what I mean? Like the same way we did it without just uh, just 100 into those three bound functions, whether it was a maybe coming in, producing a maybe, or a list coming in, producing a list, the functions in the middle didn't really care because they were composed in a way that used these higher order functions that they they would like polymorphically call the right functions depending on the context. And actually the word context is 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 the right word. So your function changes behavior based on the context. And it's not the context inside it, it's the context of like, of outside of it, which is quite interesting. It almost turns, flips that thing inside out. Cool dudes. If no more questions, I will let you go for your short week. Thanks, Tom. I think I might need to watch this again. Okay. <laughs> Just to catch myself yes. up. <laughs> I maybe need some better examples, actually. I think maybe there are some better examples. I'll try and think of some. I think it might be more my understanding, but uh, let me watch again. If I have questions, I'll post them in the chat. But cool. I did catch up on your previous one, and I fixed my to-do list. <laughs> oh, well done. <laughs> so finally, that's worth it. Oh, that's cool. So I'm going to try and make it a bit better, and I'll post the fixed version in chat. All right, cool. Thanks, dudes. Have a great week. Cool. Thanks, Thanks Tom. Tom. Ciao.